some left over. The reactions don't go to completion very well because a couple of reasons. One, you may not measure out what you start with exactly right. Sometimes you will give an excess of something to use up another reactant and make as much product as you need to, especially in industry. Industry, they need to know how much material or how much they can produce out of the least amount of reactants. And then if they have an excess reactant, if it's dangerous, they got to be able to handle that. Example I gave this morning is, this is one I've done off and on all year here. Take this NaOH solid, mix it with hydrochloric acid, which is an aqueous solution, to get sodium chloride and water. First of all, and this is sodium chloride solid and this is liquid. Is this balanced? Yep, it's balanced. Now, in reality, what I do is I pour a certain amount, I don't measure it out, I just pour some hydrochloric acid into a beaker and drop some pellets of sodium hydroxide in there. And the sodium hydroxide gets used up, but most likely the hydrogen or the hydrochloric acid hasn't. So if this is a one to one to one to one, correct? A mole of sodium hydroxide weighs what? 23 plus 16 plus one. Somebody add those up for me. 23 plus 16 plus one. 40. And one plus 35 and a half. Now, if I were to, if I wanted to do this reaction exactly right, I would weigh out exactly 40 grams of sodium hydroxide and 36 and a half grams of hydrochloric acid. And that should give us a totally safe product. Is sodium chloride safe to handle? Is water safe to handle? Yeah. But in reality, when I do this the experiments, I use an excess amount of this. And this is what limits the reaction, all right? I only put so much in, I'm only gonna make so much sodium chloride. So, um, what's gonna be left over if I use an excess of hydrochloric acid? You're gonna have hydrochloric acid left over, whatever amount of sodium chloride I made, and any water made. None of this is safe because of what? The hydrochloric acid is still there. All right. If I wanted the reaction to go to completion, what do I got to keep adding in? The sodium hydroxide. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to figure these calculations. And later this week, we are going to have a lab. I'm not exactly sure when it is because we have to use an oven to dry our samples and three classes can't fit in. But first thing, this, this seems really obvious. The limiting reactant does what? Limits the amount of product that can be created. The excess reactant is what? Not completely used up. What do you call food like mom makes meatloaf and you put some of it away? What's that called? Leftovers. That's what's left over. Now, in a chemical process in a big factory, that excess reactant might be dangerous, so now you got to get it out and recycle it or whatever. So the example we're going to use today, silicon dioxide. That is used to make glass all right glass is pretty unreactive we put chemicals in it all the time right but there's one chemical that reacts readily with glass and it's called hydrogen fluoride and it's also known as hydrofluoric acid 
Now, here's the weird thing about hydrofluoric acid. I could fill this bottle with it, not going to react. I put it in a glass bottle, come back the next day, the glass is gone. All right. Now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to start with six moles of hydrofluoric acid and four and a half moles of glass. All right. So, we don't know which one is the limiting reactant. Which one of these is going to make the least amount of product? If you were to take a guess, what one would it be? The one that has less. But, wait, there's more. Now, what's the first thing we have to do, girls? Write a balanced equation. All right? And this is going to be a double replacement reaction. So... Here we go. Here's our equation. SiO2 solid glass plus hydrogen fluoride gas is going to create silicon tetrafluoride in a gas form and water. Now, that's the crazy thing. I can take a solid, put it in this gas, a highly reactive gas, come back and all I'm going to have is leftover is water. The other has gone into the atmosphere. So, is our equation balanced? No. Who wants to take a gander on how to fix it? What's the obvious one to fix first? The hydrogen fluoride. What do I got to put there? Four. And a two in front of H2O. Are we done then? Yes. Yep. So we've balanced our equation. That's step one. Step two, we write down what we know. <clears throat> what we don't know is which one is going to make the least amount of product. What kind of problem is this going to be? <clears throat> what are we starting with? What are we starting with? Moles. What's the easiest one to do up there? So let's make it a mole to mole. No need to make it anything else but that. All right. Now, we're going to choose one of the products up there and see which one it's going to make the least of. And we're going to choose SIF4. You could have picked water, too. It doesn't matter which one you pick. What we're trying to do is see which one of these is going to make the least amount of that. All right? So you're going to do two equations. You're going to do two mole-to-mole -mole reactions. All right? Everybody on the same page. We got two reactants, two different amounts. Which one is going to create the least amount of this product right here? We've balanced our equation. We know what we got. We know what kind of problem we got. So let's get to it. So we're going to start with six moles of HF. We said this is a mole to mole conversion. We want to find out how many moles of SI. F2 we're going to make, or 4. SIF4. We want to get rid of moles of HF, correct? So that goes on the bottom. We want to get to moles of SIF2. What's the ratio? I hear four to one and one to four. Which one is it? One to four. 
Now, without using your calculators and using your brains, 6 divided by 4. What is it? Anybody? Bueller? One, one and a half. Cheater. All right. So, six moles of hydrogen fluoride will only produce one and a half moles of silicon tetrafluoride. So now, you guys thought that this was going to create the least amount. So let's see here. We got four and a half moles of silicon dioxide. We want to get to moles of SiF4 from moles of SiO2. What's the ratio, boys and girls? One to one? One to one. Ooh, that makes it really hard. What's our answer going to be? What's our answer? 4.5. Which one is the limiting reactant? Which one makes the least? The hydrogen fluoride is the limiting reactant because it made the least amount of product. All right. Now, I'll let you get, let me hit pause before we get to the home. Now, homework here, and I've modified this, keep track of that, is you still have to do the section two review, but I've, I've cut down on the chapter review, only those ones right there. And we may even push that assignment back a little bit right now. But for right now, try to get it done by Thursday. Now, today, I'm going to give you limiting and excess reactant problems. You're going to have three of them. We'll go over the first one together in class. All right. So, let me hit 